All right, so ladies and gentlemen, we are going to get started here. The first thing when this drawing loads, I have reloaded it right from square one. So first thing that you're going to do is you're going to notice that there is a rogue little mark over on the left-hand side. You are going to select that rogue little mark. How do you select it? You are going to left-click outside of the object, drawing a box downward, still holding the left mouse button, and selecting it. From there, how do we get rid of the object? What button do we hit? Escape gets us out of the command. If I want to get rid of an object, delete. If I want to delete an object, I just hit the delete button. It is very confusing, right? Now, from here, the next thing that we are going to do is we are going to look back at... Where did all my drawings go? All right, so hope, hopefully you guys can see this okay. Let's try to zoom in a little bit. Does that help you guys see it a little bit better? Yeah. Okay. All right, so what we're going to do next is we're going to take this line and we're going to offset it over so that we get a starting reference point. We're going to do the same thing down at the bottom. We are going to take this line right here, offset it up this unit or this number upward to create this part here. So that number, let's see, for the first one is going to be offset. So modify second row, fourth icon over. Offset simply does what to an object? They may remember? The what? All right, I'll put it. I'll put it in the common language for everybody. It copies a line, a given distance away from its original line. Okay, so in this case, I'm going to type in one point seven eight four five. Enter. Next thing AutoCAD's asking us for is select the line that we want to offset. I'm going to pick the vertical line, give it a direction, overextend that direction and left click. From there, I'm gonna right click and I'm gonna click confirm. What are you looking for? There's no chargers, it was on the other side. They're in a basket up there. So what's happened with the chargers is not a lot of people are returning them and they're walking off. So I had like eight, I think I'm down to four. So, yes sir. Okay, so probably lost the Wi-Fi connection and came and came back again. Yes, sir. Huh? Yeah, we're doing that. You're too busy talking, I know. All right, so I'm going back and offset again. I'm going to use the following unit, 1.0625. Those that are talking should not be talking, so I don't talk over you. Don't disrespect me because I don't disrespect you. Now I've offset that distance there of 1.0625. The next, does somebody want to come up and teach it for me? The next thing that I'm going to do is I want to establish how large my object is. So next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to figure out how large is my object left to right. It turns out that it's 6.25 units long. How tall is my object? Four units, okay? So go here, go back to offset. I'll just do 6.25. Choose the line that I want to offset, which is going to be this vertical line. Right click, confirm, right click, repeat command, four units. 
Select the line, project upwards, and confirm it. Easy peasy lemon squeezy so far, right? There's a whole bunch of different ways that we can trim lines. We can grab endpoints of those lines. We can shrink the line. We can stretch the line. We can go into the trim command itself, which is the pair of scissors on the top row, very end icon. Select it, and then we can individually choose lines. I want to show you guys a quicker way of doing it, which is going to be left click hold. And then I can draw a little scribbly line through each one of the lines I want to get rid of. Be careful because if you draw incorrectly, you can delete off a line that you didn't mean to. So now remember when I was talking a couple days ago that I said the trim command will not allow you to delete an entire line? The web version is totally different. It will allow you to delete an entire line. So be very careful when you're using the command so that you don't wipe out a line you didn't mean to. So at this point, we've now got our rectangle that pretty much illustrates what the object is. We need to put some definition into it. I know that there's a corner. This corner here is missing a piece. I know that there's a chunk cut out of here. And I know that there's a uh, angled piece that's cut out on this corner. Why don't we start in this corner here nice and easy? So if I look at the drawing, you're going to notice that it is one unit tall, 0.75 units in width. So let's go ahead and use the offset. I'm going to type in a value of, let's do one. Choose my horizontal bottom object line. Give it a direction going inward, left click. Confirm it, right click, repeat the command again. This time we're going to type in a value of 0.75. Select our line again, give it a direction going to the right. Right click, confirm it. The next thing that we are going to do is some trimming. So I'm going to go just trim the trim. I'm going to wipe out these corners here, and I'm going to wipe out these extensions here. Careful, because what happened? I went a little too far, and I wiped out something, right? There is a cool little undo button in trim, so I can come back. And I can try again. You can also, instead of moving down and hitting the undo button, notice that it's a capital letter U. So that's a shortcut. So you can just type in a U and enter. Laptop died totally. Go ahead and confirm. Now let's take a look at this part of our object over here. Who said no? All right. Give me one second. I will pick up for a month off.
Let's move forward. Taking a look at this object. Let's take a look at this corner right here. There's a couple of pieces of information that we need to know in order to continue on with the drawing. The first is how tall is this notch? Okay. We notice that it says that it's one unit to the bottom of it. Do we see a dimension that says how tall it is though? No. Okay, so this is something that will occasionally happen in drawings. They will, I'm not going to say intentionally omit a dimension, but what will actually happen is it happens in textbooks. It happens in real life drawings. Um, my father-in-law gets drawings all the time emailed over to his company so that he can bid out jobs. And occasionally there's dimensions missing from them. So what he does, he sends me the raw file so that I can open it up and I can figure out what the dimension is and then I can send it back to him. Pretty cool, huh? So in this case, let's use some ladies. I know that you're all about St. Patty's Day. I get it. I get it. You better be talking about St. Patty's Day. Better be. Unless you're talking about this drawing. Okay. All right. Good. All right. All right. They're probably talking about you. Probably. It's usually what they do. So what we're going to do is we're going to look at this drawing and we're going to try to figure out what is this value right here. I can see that overall to this point here, it's two units. So that means from here to here, it's one unit, right? Looking at this distance and looking at this distance, do they look like they're the same or very close to each other? Yeah. Look very close. So I would say that they probably are identical. So you take one unit, divide it in half, you get 0.5. So I'd say this is probably 0.5 and this is 0.5. Now, somebody in the back is probably thinking, well, wait a second. This could be 0.6 and this could be 0.4. Or this could be 0.6 and that could be 0.4. And the reason why I'm going to say it's probably not is just because I'm looking at the other values of the dimensions that are in this drawing. And really, they go by quarter inch. Okay. So there's no way that this is 0.75 and that this is 0.25. There's just no way. So we're going to stick with 0.5 and 0.5. And then we can also notice that our object from this edge here is four units. So let's go back, look at our drawing here. First thing I'm going to do is since I've got four stuck in my head, I'm going to type in four offset. Choose this line here, offset inward. Confirm it. Next thing was 
how far up was our notch to start with? How far was our notch to start with? One. So let's go offset, one unit, enter. Choose the object, give the direction upwards. Confirm it. Next. How large do we say this notch is? 0.5, right? And we said that this distance right here is 0.5. So I'm going to go back into offset again, type in a value of 0.5. Choose the line I just offset, give it a direction, and left click. I'm going to do the exact same thing again. I'm going to choose the line I just offset, give it a direction, and left click. Right click, confirm it. Now we've got pretty much all the information to create this notch here. The only thing that we got to do is do some trimming. So I'm going to go into trim. I don't need that line there. I don't need these three lines. I don't need that line. I don't need that. And I don't need that. And I no longer need this line here. All right, so I'll let you guys do that. All right, so next. 
So now we just got to do title block. Okay. So see if Michael can help you with title block. Okay. All right. So let's take a look at the last bit of this drawing so that I want to get this done before we walk out of here. Take a look right up here. The distance to this point right here is 4.75 units. So what we're going to do is we're going to take and offset this line. How many units? 4.75. Okay. So I'm going to go offset 4.75. Enter. Take this line. Go that direction. Confirm it. So again, I offset 4.75, this line, going that direction. Last thing I'm going to do is, well, second to last thing, I'm going to trim this little piece off here. And then I'm going to show you guys a little trick here. See this line? I could delete this and draw in an angled line. But you know what? I've already got the first point right here already attached. So I'm going to simply grab this second point by left click holding on it and just drag it over so that I get the green box that shows my end point. Left click on it. There our object is. Could you have done that angle differently? Absolutely. Is there any wrong way to do it? Well, as long as the object turns out correct, you did it right. Okay. Save it. And then the very last thing that you're going to do is under layout, make sure your title block is completely filled in. And right next to the save button, hold on, I'll answer your question in a second. Right next to the save button is the print button. You're going to select print, plot the PDF. Once this, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Once this PDF is generated, you get a green check mark, click download, and you can automatically upload that right to Schoology because the file format is correct on it. Got it?